Welcome back, Zerk fans, to Natalie Zidane. This is Shadow Fury 333, bringing you a match between Drone and Gulda on Red Comet. This was played just a couple days ago, and it looks like probably one of the matches they were doing to test light vehicles versus tanks. This was something that was being tested recently because people were people were throwing around complaints about how light vehicles doesn't have a way of dealing with heavy units, and then. More discussion happened and it became clear that maybe it's the opposite problem. Maybe tanks don't have an easy way of dealing with the light vehicle strategies. So some testing was done and there were changes made actually. Minor buffs to the heavy tanks as a result. But this is the version before said buff. So let's see if this gives some hints as to what prompted that. So in Red Comet, this map should be very familiar to anyone who watches this regularly. This map, like basically, Gold is gonna Gold is gonna try to take over this section, and Drone's gonna try to take over this section, as well as Gold is trying to take this and Drone trying to take this, roughly in the order I mentioned. Although, actually, it's usually usually simultaneously north and east, or south and west. It's usually a simultaneous expansion. Generally, that's how it goes. But yeah, that that's how the players are going to play this out. So yeah, Drone is going for I mean, pretty typical, pretty typical setup. I mean, with the Mason coming out very quickly. Actually, yeah, Gorda, they are going for that. They're going to the Kodachi, but not going for the early welder, interestingly enough. While Drone, on the other hand, is actually going very, very quickly for basically everything. I mean, they're going for the aggression quickly, they're going for the economy quickly, going up north quickly. They're getting a very massive economic lead early on. And while Gold, on the other hand, not able to do as much. At least not in terms of economy. They are going to build up slowly but surely. However, Drone, I think, is going to... Like, are they going to get ahead? That's the thing. Drone's really falling behind on energy production. That's the only problem. As their energy production may be slowing them down, their factory should be at... No, it's a normal... Pri yeah, it's a normal priority. Their factory is not at high... Or rather, at low priority. So they are going to have some issues building up their economy as quickly as they'd like, meaning they're not actually that far ahead of Drone... The, or sorry, of Golda at this point. A little bit surprising, but yeah, they are actually not ahead of Golda. Like Particle Beam Commander. All right. And Riot Cannon Commander. So Gold right now basically has a walking leveler. Yeah, the Kodachi unfortunately is going to go down. That being said though, Gold actually did manage to get a bit of an economic lead. They did get their economy built up a little bit faster, despite starting later. And while Drone does have a tiny bit of reclaim from the Kodachi, it's not much. It's like 40 metal of reclaim. That won't make that big of a difference. So right now, Gold is actually ahead when it comes to economy. Which is a little bit surprising for me. I expected, I mean, I was kind of expecting that Drone would come out ahead, but then Drone, they kind of, pu they pushed a lot of their forces, oh, a lot of their money into their forces, which made sense. The Kodachi was coming in. And as a result, they are about on par. So, Golda right now switching over to Panthers, and this is going to be interesting, because Panthers kind of, they take three shots to kill Scorchers. They're not generally meant to kill Scorchers. Scorchers are actually meant to counter them. That's That was a bit of a change that was made a while ago. Bit of a balance change, and it's... it's I don't know if it's that... Con it's not really controversial, but it does mean that Panthers may not be the best choice right now for dealing with these Scorchers. But we'll see. I mean, we'll see. Maybe Golda has some really good micro tricks in order to make that useful. And they're fully aware of where Drone is going. Going to the north, going around the side, going to be coming down from the north. Going to be hit by this Lotus, though. Which could be a bit of a problem. I mean, Drone right now, they know about the... They don't know about the radar. They do know about the commander. And the Panther... I mean, okay, the Panther is not even relevant yet. Like, okay, yeah. One shot's a weak, or very nearly dead Scorcher. And another very nearly dead Scorcher. So with support... Okay, Panther's... Hard to really say. At this point, we haven't seen anything conclusive whether or not Panthers are the big of a deal. Really, Panthers aren't the problem. Panthers have been nerfed quite a lot. They aren't the issue. The issue is going to be Reapers. The issue is possibly going to be Banishers as well, and I doubt the issue will be Goliaths, because I don't think I've seen any heavy tank player play Goliaths against light vehicles. I suppose you could. I mean, against Ravager Ball, it might be worth it, but usually Reapers are the option of choice. Reapers and Banishers. And at this point... They're still pretty neck and neck economically speaking. Though Drone is certainly using their economy more than Gold is. Gold is storing a lot more of their resources. Pushing far less into the factory, far more into their economy. They're really playing for the late game right now. 
Drona, however, is also expanding quite a lot. They're not letting that slack either. They're just not storing as much. So I'm not sure what Gold is waiting for. They don't have any caretakers at the factory or any workers assisting it. Whereas Drone has just got the caretaker. They have their workers assisting. They have 30 build power going into the factory right now. So pretty much their entire economy is being pushed into that factory whenever said economy is available fully. But Gold, on the other hand, is starting to excess, or almost about to excess. This is very strange. I'm actually really surprised that Gold is allowing themselves to excess like this. This is unusual play. Golden must be extremely rusty right now. I'm just surprised they're they're letting their economy go like that. Whereas drone, like just yeah, as, as the spectators are saying, drone is expanding at full speed because Golda at this point did not invest that much into their military. I mean they could be trying to go for a fake like a fake expansion attempt. Like they're they don't have military or they're not attacking, so it looks like, oh well I'm not expanding. And then they suddenly have this burst of military. But I don't see how that's going to work given that Drone has been building military this entire time. So, I mean, they could go for a burst of military, and it does look like they are going to try to do that. But Drone isn't exactly naked expanding. They have Lotuses everywhere, so it's going to take a little bit of firepower to get through. And the Dominatrices, in support of their levelers, that's going to be a bit of a problem. The Dominatrixes in particular, that's probably what they're testing, is how good the Dominatrix is as an anti-heavy weapon. And it's a little bit tricky because its weapon does depend on the health of the unit in question, the current health of the unit in question, so more damaged units are easier to capture. But at this point, hard to say. And it looks like the Panthers are still pretty viable. Alright, so Panthers versus Scorchers can at least in small numbers work decently well, but... Now the Dominatrix exists, and it's doing its thing, and that's going to be a pain in the butt for Golda. Now Drone very nearly about to excess, although not quite, but yeah, Golda, they have their, they have their production up now. A little surprised they're going for Panthers continuously though. I'm surprised they haven't switched to Reapers yet. I mean, granted, I suppose they could always use more Panthers, but with levelers in the field, that's not really the case. No, they, they really can't. I suppose it does help with the Dominatrices a little bit. Because, you know, light units do deal with that. Like, Dominatrix will just waste its capture beams, and then you don't have to worry about the Dominatrix anymore. But there are so many of them. I don't think it'll matter. How many are there? Eight. Okay, seven currently on the field. So that's seven Panthers that have to come in in order to be able to deal with the Dominatrices. At, sorry, more than seven. Like, 14 Panthers, because they have to deal with their old Panthers. Ah, sorry. Pillagers coming in as well. So we have that. Which are quite accurate now, so they could deal with the Dominies at range, assuming the Dominies stay still. If the Dominatrices do not stay still, then the Pillagers have really no hope. Yeah, at this point, Drone, they did not naked expand. They were safe in their expansion, so counterattacking is going to be tricky. They have Dominatrices, which, even when they get hit, don't take you. How much damage does this thing deal? Oh, 600, yeah. So a direct hit will not kill. Okay, I guess disregard what I said about levelers against a mass of panthers, it's not as useful. But yeah, the dominatrices are going to be risky. It's going to be risky to attack them, but if the attack works, then they're going to all fall. Now, whether or not that'll happen, it's... Well, it's what Gold is banking on. Like, Gold needs that to happen. They need... They need those panthers to come in. I should point out, too, that pillagers are quite accurate now. They've had an accuracy buff recently. I say that right as it misses a metal extractor that should have easily seen. Actually, should have? Oh, maybe not. Radar is not really there. But yeah, with these dominatrices, these dominatrices have captured buildings. They're on reload. But Gold deciding not to go for that, a little bit surprising because they that was on reload. They had a good five second window to attack. Although, given the position of the Panthers, that would have probably been more like two seconds by the time they got there. I, I'm i guessing that's what Gorda was thinking. Like, there isn't really that much time. But now we see possible counterattack coming in here. One of these Panthers will go down, its comrades will kill it. And then, of course, EMP Death Explosion. Yeah, those defenders are going to be a problem. So, Drone right now... Drone very strongly defended all along their front. Gold, on the other hand, has basically no defenses. What they do have, the dominatrices, dominatrices will take out, but they have almost no defenses whatsoever. 
and the economy is 10 metal in gold is, and sorry in drones favor and gunships because why not interesting okay so Goliath coming in here that could be useful with the Panthers just deal with the dominatrices if the dominatrices are trying to hit the Goliath that could be extremely useful because then they're all trying to hit the Goliath then they're distracted from hitting everything else and the Panthers can rip them apart but at the same time, the Dominatrices are kind of there to deal with things like the Goliath. So if the Goliath gets captured, and that Dominatrix in question, the one that ends up capturing it, isn't killed, that's a Goliath... That's 12,000... Is that 1,200? Is that 12,000 metal? No, that's 12,000 health. That's 2,000 metal being turned on them. So this is not, I'm sure, what they'd like to see. Thankfully I had to banish her, but still, even with the Flex AA, it's going to be tricky. These Panthers are not close enough. Well, almost not close enough. And Gordas does not want to have a chain panther explosion, that's for sure. They do not want to have that explode in that group. Have everything stunned out and then just get torn to shreds. I mean, at this point, I think they're only living because Gorda, sorry, because Drone hasn't attacked them yet. Like, Drone has simply not chosen to attack them. But Gorda is... Like, they're once again getting very close to accessing. They have... No anti-air, they have, or they have, well, okay, the Cobra now, but they have basically no anti-air. No easy way to get rid of dominatrices. I mean, they're forcing Drone to respect their possibilities somewhat, but at the same time, I think Drone might just be biding their time to make sure they have a truly overwhelming force. Well, the same, okay, never mind, the Ravager's coming in here, that's not, that's not what I'd call waiting for a truly overwhelming force. That was, that's what I'd call trying to see what you can get away with, and the answer is a lot. Though these Ravagers will have a bit of a tough time with the Panthers, that's the only problem. Like, the Panthers should be able to deal with them without too much issue. Especially this number of Panthers. Yeah, this number of Panthers will have no problem. But at the same time, the Southeast has been opened up. Gold, Gold lost a bit of their economy, and Drone still able to open up the North Side. And there we go, there's the Sneaky P, there's our Eraser option. Well, Cloaking option. And the Goliath, unsupported. Oh, one shots dummies. Okay, that makes sense. Apparently two shots ravens as well. How much damage? Sorry, ravens. Two shots rapiers as well. Yeah, I would two shot them. 1,000 health and 1,100 damage. Sorry, 1,000 damage and 1,100 health. Okay, so the Goliath is not a bad choice. Much more effective than I expected, but even then, Gorda is behind in their economy. Even with a fusion reactor, even with the overdrive that's going to come in because of that, which is... Well, decent amount. An extra three metal. Oh, no, actually... Whoa! Three to four metal. That's, however, 20 behind drone, so I really shouldn't be so excited. It's like, wow, they're getting a very slight increase in metal. They're barely on par with drone. And drone is essentially completely free to harass anywhere on the map. There are no razors, there are no hacksaws even, and there's the cobra. That's, uh, sorry, the Copperhead. The Cobra is the static version. There's the Copperhead. That's about it. There's the... At the Goliath over here, which can do... Oh, sorry, the Banisher. There's the Banisher. That actually can help for anti-air. And the Goliath is doing its fair share of damage, at least. No Dominatrices to be found, actually. Interesting. There's nothing right here. Instead of Dante, we have complete switch... Not even bothering with the factory anymore, just going for a complete switch into Scorchers on top of that. So the Dominatrix idea seems to have been abandoned, and Gorda is actually getting a lot of leeway as a result. Yeah, it looks like all the Dominatrices were... they were killed. They were lost. Seriously? I can't find them, that's for sure. Nope, it looks like they are all dead. They were all killed. So they do not work. They are not the solution. They're commonly considered the solution, but I guess in this particular case, or the Goliath is just too heavy. Goliath just deals with them. Although the Pillagers are helping a lot. I mean, I think the Pillagers are probably the bigger thing, because the Pillagers were killing Dominatrices from here and there. So it wasn't... it wasn't nothing. They were doing some damage. And now, a very heavy tank against a very heavy tank buster. Which... looks like he's gonna go in favor of the very heavy walking tank. Panthers basically acting like ticks because that's all they have anymore. Did that Goliath go... 
That Goliath survives. Survives and is getting repaired. It should be fine. The Dante, on the other hand, moving forward, hasn't been damaged enough for a drone to consider it worth retreating. But at this point, drone is still ahead economically. They can still swallow any anything Golder tries to smash into them. Like they can just eat it. It's no big deal. They're probably gonna live. So I don't know how this Dante's gonna. Like, this Dante might die. Drone doesn't have another one coming yet, but they do have a bunch of Raptors coming. They have a, the Scorches coming. Like, they have a bunch of support forces, and the Brawlers are already in play. They have a lot of forces to deal with. Deal with. So, Golda is putting up a valiant fight, but I just don't see them being able to ultimately deal with all this. Their forces are forced to be very concentrated because heavy tanks tend to be. They didn't build a lot of static defense either, which is surprising given the fact that they're heavy tanks. Like, they're playing heavy tanks. They have a tiny bit of static defense concentrated to the south, but I mean, they've obviously lost a bit. But they didn't have that much to begin with, whereas with Drone, if you look at their side, they have a huge amount of static defense on the front line, mind you, but still, a huge amount of static defense. It's rather surprising when you think about it, because tanks can't maneuver very much. That's basically their big weakness. And unfortunately, that Dante getting just... Is that Dante seriously faster? No, it's slightly slower, but because of turning... The Goliath's kind of stuck. But at the same time, over to the north side, I mean, Drone, they've broken the north side, they've broken the south side. Golda doesn't have really much more they can work with here. Relatively speaking, the second Goliath is nice. But unless the Dante gets into slow beam range, it's not going to matter all that much. And it looks like it is actually just now in slow beam range. It has just been slowed down, and it should be enough. Like two more hits in the Dante, and it's dead, but nope, the Goliath goes down. So nope. Burned to death. Did not work. Yeah, like, Drone just has such a commanding presence right now. I don't see them having any issues at all. And with every metal, like, trying to be worth, like, four or five metal, this is also going to be a problem. And the sheer amount of metal involved just means that anyone going down, it's like, any harassment being done is massive. Any harassment drone does is a huge deal, especially in the main base. And I think that Gulda is probably going to throw in the towel fairly soon. Although the Panthers are doing a decent job, it's still just on all sides. They don't have much to work with. And that Dante's still not dead. Oh, this is the Dante that was not dead. Second Dante's still not dead. Even with the slow beam, that doesn't help enough. Because I mean, the Dante's... It's kind of hard to see, but... They basically have the same range. Like, 450 range and... 460 range for the... Well, 430 range for the heat ray. So, there's a very slight range advantage for the Goliath. Very, very slight. Not really enough to be worth it, but that Dante is about to die. Or would be if the Goliath would target it. But the Dante to the south, not so much. The Dante to the north is one shot away from death. There is the shot. So at least one Dante's down, but that's two Goliaths that are about to go down with the second Dante, the second Goliath just now killed. And the second Dante doing a great job tearing apart the south side. The welders can't really do anything about it, and it's gonna destroy all of these metal. It's not even gonna bother the metal extractors. It's just gonna go north. Just oh it is! It is going to the metal extractors. What? I would expect it to just go north. I guess harass you can, but yeah. That is basically it. Drone had the advantage that entire game. I mean, Gota didn't... This thing, Gota didn't build a lot of army for a little while. Like, early in the game, they didn't build up their army. Their army of Panthers, they were kind of relying on to have numbers. And yeah, Terraform Stardust would have been... That would have helped. Yeah, Sky Deaths would have been really handy. But I still don't know it would have been that big of a deal. It would have helped against the Scorchers, but they weren't used for very long. The Dominatrix were... Like, the Dominatrices were used a lot, and those don't really care. The Levelers don't really care. Because, I mean, it's such short range, it doesn't matter. So, I don't think it would make a difference. I really don't. The Ravagers might have had a problem, though. That is one situation, because the Ravagers don't have a huge range, so... Spire Dust would have been an issue for them. But, given the Rapiers, given the Brawlers later on, like, given all the stuff that Drone had... Golda just didn't build enough with the, with the money they had. They had they had the economy, 
they didn't really spend it until they nearly accessed several times. So yeah, that is... That was that game. Not sure when Gold is going to throw in the towel, though. I guess... There we go. Yeah. Left the game. So, what was... Oh, it doesn't show me. What was the metal excess? Yeah, g wow! Gorda had 2,000 metal excess? They must have not played for a while. Like, th they must be really rusty, because that... I mean, I realize that Gorda's always been a bit more of a micro-focused, like, slightly more micro-focused, but they're still a really good player. 2,000 metal excess throughout the course of the game, especially given how consistent it was throughout the game, that is really high. Like, I am... I'm actually kind of surprised. Like, Drone had a slight mistake around the time they were at 40 45 metal, but for a lot of the game, like, I'm not entirely surprised given the, how high that storage bar was the entire game, but still, that's a lot of excess for a player of that caliber. And I'm just thinking, Golda must... I think Golda didn't even have many units produced... Well, sorry, metal produced. At the weaker economy the entire time, and they accessed a little bit. They built fewer units. They actually managed to kill... Like, they were... This is what Golda does. They're super efficient. They're really good at efficiency. Although we're also talking heavy tanks versus light vehicles, and heavy tanks will always be more efficient just because they're heavier units. But yeah, I mean, sure. Golda lost half as many units as Drone. Ow. But Drone just outbuilt them hugely. Like, this is usually how Drone versus Golda goes, is that Drone just builds a massive army and then pushes it forward, doesn't care too much if they live or die, cares obviously because they're not going to let them completely die for nothing, but usually will just push forward, while Golda, on the other hand, will be much more economical. They'll try to save units, try to make sure the units don't die unnecessarily, and it's a toss-up who wins. Like, it... It's not like one's necessarily better than the other. It's just that they're so close in skill, they just have that notable stylistic difference between the two. I mean, I've seen games where Golda's won because they didn't lose as many units, and Drone did. In this particular game, it was just Golda didn't have the defense positioning, it seems. That seems like the biggest thing. They didn't have any real defenses. And being heavy tanks, you kind of have to. So anyway, the next game, the last game, is going to be on... I believe it was... Ravaged. No, Finn's Revenge! Sorry, Finn's Revenge between Golda and Felthos being played on version 13812, the version with the tank buff. I seriously doubt that we're going to see tanks on Finn's Revenge of all places. Probably Hovercraft and Amphib. But still, the tanks have been buffed. So we'll get to that in just a moment. Stay tuned. <laughs> 